welcome back. I'm here with Glenn Wagstaff, founder and managing partner of Intervivos, PLLC. Glenn, so much of what we own today is digital, whether it's your movie collection, your music, uh, even email accounts. Is there anything that we need to consider when thinking about your digital property? Well, of course there is. Um, if something were to happen to you, those digital accounts don't just disappear. And nobody has access to your accounts without your permission. So if, something, if somebody were to try to access one of your accounts without permission, uh, you know, written permission or otherwise, then that's actually a federal offense, a federal felony. And so it's important to make sure that if you want anyone to access those accounts when you're gone, that you provide a means to be able to do that. And planning around those digital accounts is, is an important component of your estate plan. Now, does that include things like online banks? Everything from online banking to nowadays people have Bitcoin and they have all kinds of different digital currency, cryptocurrency. Uh, there may be digital assets from, uh, from different you know, gaming accounts or all kinds of different things that we see nowadays uh, that are important to plan around. And it becomes especially important if you're a business owner and you have intellectual property or book rights or movie rights or royalties of any kind, right? Planning around those assets uh, as part of your estate is important. Now, privacy is a huge issue. Now, if you want your accounts to be passed on to your heirs, what can you do? Or if you don't want to pass your accounts on to your heirs, what do you do? You know, there's been a lot of case law and, and situations where, uh, for example, even, you know, suicide notes that were left on Facebook and that was the final post and then they're gone and the family wants it taken down. But because of privacy laws, if Facebook gave in and allowed them to take it down, it would put uh, the rest of their privacy settings at risk. So they haven't allowed that to happen. And, most of those cases have come out in favor of the companies like Facebook or, uh, you know, um, MySpace or even, you know, to an extent, email accounts. And so making sure that you designate, if, if it's something you want to stay in a digital format, like for example, you have a blog and the blog maybe is something that earns you money. Well, it would be valuable for you to maintain that and for somebody to have access and to continue to maintain it as if you were still alive that would be important to put in writing and to be able to designate somebody to do that. On the contrary, if you don't want that account to stay up, like the Facebook account, you would need to designate somebody and empower them to be able to close that account. And so all of that is are important considerations in planning, specifically if there's value in those accounts or if it's a sensitive, uh, you know, a, a sensitive situation that you would want to make sure that that was addressed. Um, it's best to address it proactively because you might not be able to do it after the fact. Now, you mentioned intellectual property. How do you plan around that kind of topic? So both intellectual property and digital assets, it might be as simple as just assigning that property to your trust plan and having a, a proper trust plan in place. Or it may be more complex of making sure that we separate out that property and designate someone to be able to manage and be able to uh, do what needs to be done to maintain it and maintain the value and, and the royalties or whatever comes from it or be empowered to sell it. Fascinating. 